Cause it's time to talk about games. Hey everyone, I'm here to talk to you about one of my favorite games for families and for new people. It's called Go Nuts for Donuts. Now this video is in a couple parts. Um, I think three parts. One part, first I'm going to talk to you about the base game. Second, I'm going to call attention to what I think the publisher, uh, something they did right and why I like this game. And then the third part is a modification I added to this game and I want to share it with you guys. So in the timestamp below, you'll see parts where you can go right to each part of the video. So let's get started. So Go Nuts for Donuts. This is published by Game Right Games. It says it's a two to six player game and it's a lot of fun. So what you get inside the box is these cards here called donut cards. And on the back they say, go nuts for donuts. But on the front they have all these really pretty donuts. Yay, we got all kinds of donuts. In fact, let me show you a few that, uh... so here is donut holes, okay? And so with donut holes, if you collect, uh, they're a set collector, so oh, here's another one. So at the end of the game, if you have one donut hole, then it's only worth one point. But if you have more, so in this case, two, or th then, the, then the set would be worth three points. Or if there's five, if you have five of these at the end of the game, then they're worth a total of 15. Not 15 each, but the whole set of those donut holes are. This is a plain donut, it's worth one point, but if you have the most plain donuts, then you're gonna get a bonus of three points. So sometimes you wanna collect those. Glazed donuts, just worth two points. Um, here is a, an eclair, which is take the top card from the discard pile, which the discard pile is face up, so you get to use that when you want it. Then there's raw, Raspberry Frosted discard one of your cards. Now this helps because some of the cards have a negative value on there, but the negative value cards allow you to do certain things. Uh, here's, a, here's a negative value card. All right, so this one is Day Old Donuts. Ew. It's worth minus seven if you have it at the end of the game. So it's one of these that you want to use and then use, say, the Raspberry Frosted to get rid of. What this does, it says take up to three cards from the discard pile. That's pretty powerful. Instead of just the top card, you actually go through the whole uh, discard pile and search for the cards you want. But minus seven, ooh, is it worth taking at the end of the game unless you can get a Raspberry Frosted or something else that uh, lets you get rid of it? So that's you know, a little bit of a strategy there. This is Mucho Matcha. I love the little face on there. It's worth three points if you have fewer than seven types of cards. So. If you're going for select set, you may want that. Bear Claw, that's a negative card. It's worth negative two if you have this at the end of the game, but you get to take a card from another player. So if that card lets you score five or six, then maybe it's worth it to take the Bear Claw. Maple Frosted is the opposite of the other one. Uh, it's worth five points if you have the fewest cards. Oh no, it's not the opposite. It's just the fewest cards overall. So if you're looking like you're in last place, maybe you want this. Uh, anyway, so there's more here. Uh, double chocolate says draw two cards from the deck. This is making me hungry. Make Draw two cards from the deck and keep one, return the other. So these are fun cards and you collect these. Well, how do you collect them? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what we do is we put out these things come with the game and they're headers for little columns. So you have you take the number of players plus one. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's make these in frame here. So let's simulate a four player game, all right? So we're not gonna use these, which are number six and seven, but we are gonna use number five because you use one extra than there is a number a person. So in this case, you deal one to every column and all the players get a chance to look them over. So here we have a plain, sprinkled, jelly-filled, plain eclair. Whoo, I want some donuts. All right, and then everybody has these cutest button voting cards, okay? They're numbered one through, I think, seven. So in this case, what you do is you, before the game starts, this is a six, 
you get rid of all the high numbers that aren't used in the game per your player count. So in this case, in a four player game with five uh, columns, you would have voting cards one through five. And what every player does is they keep these in their hand and they keep them secret. Oops, there's two twos, sorry about that. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, okay. So you keep these secret in your hand and then you get a chance to mull over which one you want. You're like, oh man, I could really use this jelly filled. Maybe you've got one or two already. Yeah, let's say you've got three, which is worth five points. But if you get one more, it bumps you up to 10 points. I don't know if you can see that on there. Uh, let's see if you can see that. Uh, I made it worse. Yeah, you can't see that, whatever. So just take my word for it. So maybe you want this jelly filled. That's in slot number three. So what you would do is you'd take the voting card for number three and put that in front of you. And maybe with your finger on it is my little rule there. And everybody would have a voting card. Let's just randomly pick some others. And everybody's got their finger on theirs. Okay. And um, what we do is we turn over the cards. Oh, look at that. Everybody wanted number three, which is bad news. And this five wouldn't even be in the game. Oh, yeah, the five would be in the game. So this player who picked the five is the lone player. And because they were the only player that picked number five, they get the eclair, which it says, take the top card from the discard pile. Yay for them. However, these three people, because they all got greedy <laughs> and they all picked number three, then nobody gets number three. All right, so five is gone, and then a new card from the deck comes out, and you keep playing until there's no more cards. And so what you're trying to do is avoid the double think. You're thinking, all right, listen, you know, I see you're looking for uh, jelly filled. Um, so you might say, I'm gonna go for plain donut, and then really you go for jelly filled. <laughs> That's what happens in this game. So it, it's fun because you're, you're collecting these, but you're also trying to sway others from, from picking the card uh, that you want to pick. So sometimes you pick something less desirable because, you know, it's a card that you can get. So there's the, the base game. Oh, by the way, the cards that you get stay in front of you. Let's say this is a player. Let's just move these over here, blah, blah, blah. So the cards that you get stay in front of you is, is your tableau. And so as you collect more cards, you have to clearly display what you have so that people can tell what you're working on. And at the end of the game, all the cards you have in your, not your hand, in front of you uh, score. And by the way, the voting cards, I forgot to say, every time you vote, you get your cards back. You always get your voting cards back. So that's how you play Go Nuts for Donuts. So now let's talk about something I really like in the game. All right, so first thing I want to talk about, actually, I'm going to talk about two things. Number one is the rule book. This is a really nice rule book. It's, it's well laid out, and they have pictures showing the setup, and they have examples. They tell you what the action cards do. They actually have a uh, kind of a glossary for some of the donuts that may be a little bit hard to understand, kind of like more details with pictures by them. I mean, really well done uh, rule book. And uh, let's see, more information about the donuts grouped into color, which I'm going to get to in, in, in my last thing. So Game Right did an amazing job with this rule book. I mean, who wants to understand rules and games? I mean, this is what you want to do is just get a game and jump into it and start playing. Here's the part that I really, really, really like about this game. This game, like so many others, scales. So this says two players, three players, four players, or uh, five or more players and it shows you which color cards to use. Now, that's not a novel concept, except for what they did is they made it really apparent with giant colored backgrounds um, to easily show which cards go where. So if you're playing with um, less than five players, you don't include all these colors. Now, what other designers have done, other publishers of games, they put little tiny, tiny icons to show you which cards get included in certain player counts. That doesn't cut it. Game right really hit a home run here by making it clear, a clear, easy differentiator to help you quickly sort through the deck and find the cards that need to go with the right play count. So I, I gotta give props to Game Right for coming up with such an easy system. I wanted to call them out for that. 
so let's also talk about what I like about the game. I like in Go Nuts for Donuts how easy it is to introduce to kids or new gamers. I like that at six players it plays fast because you're simultaneously uh, playing your voting cards, these little things, and they're cute as a button too. They look like donuts. They're making me hungry. And um, it, the game's over pretty quick. If you if you notice the game's dragging on, I just grab some of the stack, especially with kids, uh, of the cards, and I just toss them, and then we shorten up the game because you want to keep people engaged. The game does say two to six players. I, uh, I I don't think this is a good two-player game. It's okay at three. I think four, five, and six is where it really is. It, it's a it's almost like a party style filler game. I don't know if party is the right term. It's definitely a filler game, but definitely a family weight game. Three players is okay. And um, but yeah, great game. So now let's talk about the one issue I had with this game and how I modified it. And that's where we're going to start with the brucified stamp. So let's roll it. This game has Okay, now this game has been brucified. I set some high expectations for this. Okay, so what did, what did I not like about the game? Let's, let's go there and, and let's talk about how I fixed it and how you can fix this game for not spending any money, okay? You can have your kids help you. So you've got your columns here. Let's just say there's Let's just say it's a three player game. And so you've got your columns one, two, three, and an extra one, like the rules say. Well, what I say is now, this is my modification. You add even one more column and you put these tongs, little tongs, little pictures of tongs, um, here per the number of players. So this is, a, this is a three player game. Remember there's one extra. So you put one, two, three tongs, and you take the rest of these and you put them back in the box, you don't use them. So, now the cards come out. Uh, let's just say they're like this. You've got four choices for a three player game, and you also have tongs over here. And what you do is you give players voting, one, voting cards one through five, so you wouldn't use six, all right? Now what I do is I make slot number five an open slot. Normally in the game, if two people, two or more people pick the same slot, nobody gets anything, which can be frustrating because, you know, you, you get three, four turns and you're blocked, you're blocked, you're blocked. It just happens by accident sometimes. Sometimes you try to pick the least desirable donut and you still get blocked because someone else was doing the same thing. So in slot number five now, there's tongs. And each player is only allowed one pair of tongs. So you gotta help kids. If you already have a pair of tongs in front of you from a previous turn, you can't go here again. You can't get a second pair of tongs. But everybody can go here and get one pair of tongs. So let's just divvy up these to all the players, all right? Now on a subsequent turn, if two or more players try to pick here and they're blocked and they normally get nothing, what you can do, and it's optional, is you can turn your tongs back in to take a blind card off the top of the deck. So that little system is really nice because it keeps you coming up from coming up short. It keeps you from getting frustrated. Of course, there's a risk on what is on the top of the deck. It may be a card you wanted, maybe a card you didn't want, uh, but it adds a little bit of strategy because now you can know when there's maybe no good donuts out there. Now is the time to go grab a pair of tongs. And uh, I even have this little device here. This is a box of donuts. This is a small thing. It doesn't come up that much, but if multiple players turn their tongs back in at the same time, this box says who gets to use their tongs first. So we randomly set this in front of one player. And every time there's a clash and uh, someone needs to turn their tongs back in, from the starting player working clockwise around the table, people turn their tongs in and grab the top card of the deck. Once the box has been used as a tiebreaker, then the box then the box of donuts moves to the next person. 
and, and so on. That just helps uh, give some order to turning back in the tongue so he's not rushing to grab new donuts all at once. So how can you use these modifications without, uh, you know, just like a do-it-yourself version? Well, first of all, instead of a box of donuts, just use the game box, right? Set the game box in front of someone and rotate that around the table. So there's that. Uh, the other thing is have your kids draw up some tongs or whatever else you want on there and uh, cut them out. I mean, it's easy. I, I started with this. I, <laughs> I go through the whole thing. I bought these little plastic tongs online. Oh, these, they look like metal, right? Yeah, they are metal. And uh, kids get so uh, excited, they broke a few, right? So then I had a 3D printer for a while and I printed some 3D tongs. Okay, you know what, none of that was, the best are these paper things. <laughs> they're, they're just easier to see. You can make your own. And uh, the only other small var variation is if you're playing with the max player count, you won't be able to add an extra slot and the tongs, you just use the last slot as the pair of tongs. It still works. I printed up the rules for this. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll put it in a PDF and stick it in the link below. Right, drop it on the floor, yeah, hang on a second. It's not fancy, but uh, it describes, uh, you won't be able to see that, describes the uh, variant for uh, the tongs. So I'll put that, uh, not right away, but I'll eventually post that. This makes it fun. This makes it so that you have, everybody has something to do. You can either plan for a future block or you can accommodate yourself when you're blocked um, on a lot of turns. So it's, it's a really, fun, it makes this game fun. It, was, it took the one thing I didn't like about the game, which was getting blocked repeatedly and made it more fun by eliminating, well, not completely eliminating, but by, by reducing that a lot. This game's a lot of fun. If you get it straight out of the box, maybe it doesn't bother you that you get blocked. Uh, it bothered me to go through three, four turns in a row and get nothing for every turn uh, while everybody was collecting something. So the tongs were just an added uh, a way to, to uh, make the game fun. It's already fun. I highly recommend this for people introducing modern board games to uh, people who haven't seen it. So that's my review. Thank you for checking this out, and I want you to play more games, y'all. This game is now being crucified, it's been a crucified.